Apparently, their natural progression was to create a vehicle that possessed both armament and armor. This remarkable achievement materialized at the request of Vickers, Sons and Maxim Limited, with the first such vehicle being showcased in London in 1902. Just two years later, in France, the Société Charon, Girardot et Voigt produced a fully armored car complete with a turret, while concurrently, Austria's Austro Daimler Company crafted a similar vehicle. The final step in the development of modern armored fighting vehicles was the adoption of tracks instead of wheels. This transition became inevitable with the introduction of tracked agricultural tractors. However, it wasn't until the outbreak of World War I that there was a compelling reason to make this shift. The concept of a tracked armored vehicle was initially proposed in France as early as 1903 but failed to garner interest from military authorities. Similar proposals in England in 1908 faced a similar fate. Even three years later, designs for tracked armored vehicles were rejected by the Austro-Hungarian and German general staffs. In 1912, the British War Office also turned down another design for such vehicles. The outbreak of World War I in 1914 brought about a profound transformation in military technology. The initial phase of mobile warfare during the war's onset expedited the development of armored cars, which were hastily improvised in Belgium, France, and Britain. However, the advent of trench warfare rendered armored cars less effective, prompting the emergence of new concepts for tracked armored vehicles. These innovations aimed to enable armored vehicles to navigate off-road terrain, traverse rough landscapes, and overcome barbed wire obstacles. During the First World War, Britain began the serious development of the tank. The genesis of the first tracked armored vehicle occurred in Britain in July 1915, when an armored car body was affixed to a kill and straight tractor. This creation was the brainchild of the Armored Car Division within the Royal Naval Air Service, supported by Winston S. Churchill, the first Lord of the Admiralty. Their collective efforts led to the establishment of an Admiralty Landships Committee. This committee conducted a series of experiments that culminated in the construction of the initial tank, dubbed Little Willie, in September 1915. Soon after, a subsequent model known as Big Willie was developed. Designed to traverse wide trenches, it garnered approval from the British Army, which subsequently ordered 100 tanks of this type, designated as Mark I in February 1916. The first official photograph taken of a tank going into action at the Battle of fleurs a corselette on the 15th of September 1916. The tank is a Mark I, with a steering tail at the rear of the vehicle that disappeared in many later models. The early tanks were slow and unreliable, shown by the fact that of the 49 tanks deployed for the battle, only 25 actually moved forward at the start of the attack. Tanks were independently developed in France and the United Kingdom. The first French tank, known as the Schneider, resembled an armored box mounted on a tractor chassis. The breakthrough in tank warfare occurred on November 20, 1917, during the Battle of Cambrai, where 474 British tanks played a pivotal role. These tanks, while successful, were slow and had limited operating ranges, prompting a demand for lighter and faster tank designs. In 1918, the 14-ton medium A tank was introduced, boasting a speed of 8 miles 13 kilometers per hour and a range of 80 miles 130 kilometers. Post-1918, the French Renault FT emerged as the most widely used tank, characterized by its lightweight six-ton design tailored for close infantry support. Between World War I and World War II, significant advancements and improvements were made to tanks. These developments were driven by combat experience, technological innovations, and evolving military doctrines. Some key improvements during this period included armor, armament, mobility, radio communications, amphibious capabilities, reliability, crew comfort, and tactics. By WW2, tanks had become part of standard military doctrine in most armies. The German tank force in 1939 consisted of 3,195 vehicles, including 200 PZ-4s emerged as the most effective during World War II. Their formidable reputation stemmed from the strategic concentration of tanks within panzer divisions, as opposed to being dispersed among various infantry and cavalry units. The success of these panzer divisions in the early years of the war prompted other major armies to adopt similar concentrated tank formations, resulting in a substantial boost in tank production. After World War II, there was a strong focus on enhancing the armament of tanks, especially their capacity to combat enemy tanks. 
This led to the continuous enlargement of tank gun calibers, the creation of advanced armor-piercing ammunition, and the adoption of sophisticated fire control systems to enhance the accuracy and effectiveness of tank guns against targets. Skipping ahead to the modern day, questions have arisen about how useful tanks really are on the modern battlefield. Although they remain an important player in militaries, they must be used in conjunction with other systems and equipment to make them truly effective. Battle tanks are formidable war machines, equipped with robust armor and potent weaponry, making them capable of confronting diverse threats on the battlefield. Their agility enables deployment across different sectors, instilling fear in their enemies. However, tanks also have limitations in modern warfare. They are vulnerable to anti-tank mines and missiles, and their maintenance and operational costs can be substantial. There is also a question of economics, whereby a multi-million dollar tank can be neutralized by an anti-tank weapon costing a mere fraction of the cost. Amid ongoing discussions about the viability of tanks, several nations are actively devising plans for the next generation tank. Expected to be revealed within the next 10 to 15 years, these future combat vehicles have the potential to revolutionize the traditional tank concept. Future main battle tank designs are currently following two distinct trends. Some platforms, like the Russian Armata, prioritize greater armor, active protection systems, and larger size. In contrast, other countries are exploring autonomous or remotely controlled systems to reduce the necessity for extensive protection, with the goal of enhancing speed and firepower. 